Okay, so how is everyone today? Good. Good? It must, <laughs> there must not be any homework due today. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> All right. My teacher sense is telling me. Uh, all right, so, uh, fine. Today's the 10th. Uh, we've been talking about solving no, uh, nonlinear inequalities. And uh, we did one example uh, of solving. So here's another one. So please solve, so shh, 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 shh. So please solve 2x uh, minus 3 divide by, uh, how about, uh, I don't know, um, x plus 8 less or equal 2. Okay, so, uh, <clears throat> so we did one example of the sign chart uh, method last time, and uh, admittedly, it's a little bit uh, tedious, but uh, that's what's required to get credit for such an exercise. So we'll use uh, the sign chart method. So uh, <clears throat> what's the first step? Yeah, find the natural domain. Which is to say, uh, for, for which values of x is that inequality defined? Or, you know, alternatively, for which values of x is it not defined? So negative 8 is a problem, right? Uh, so in fact, anything but, uh, but negative 8. Okay, everything else is okay. That doesn't mean that uh, every other value that you plug in, the result is true. It just means that uh, every other, for every other x value, that inequality is defined. Maybe it's false. Maybe it's true. Uh, the next step is uh, the zero and simplify step. So, uh, hey, fellas, guys, if, if you can't, if you have an important conversation, you need to step outside. Thank you. <coughs> so, zero and simplify. So, uh, that means that uh, we're going to take this inequality and uh, we're going to move all terms to the same side. So, uh, so just writing this inequality. <coughs> Uh, the way that we'll do it is uh, subtracting 2 from both sides. So is it, uh, is it always uh, safe to subtract or add the same number from both sides? Yes. Yeah, that one's always okay. Uh, because with, in it, with inequalities, the, the thing you've got to be careful of is that, uh, well, like equations, you can't multiply both sides or divide both sides by 0. That's not okay. But uh, as an additional tricky business, if you multiply both sides by a negative number, what happens? Yeah, the direction of the inequality reverses. Okay, so that's what we want to avoid, uh, ha having to deal with that. So now the inequality is this. Uh, two? Two? Oh, you know what? Darn. Let me think about this for just a second. Yeah, this is fine. All right, fine. Less or equal to. No, this is not going to work. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, this is not what I intended. Uh, rather, I want, this, I want this 2, that 2 right there, to be a 1. Because otherwise it's going to... It's going to be a different kind of problem than I intended, anyhow. Okay. Sorry about that. So this is a 1. So there's a 1. And there's a 1. And then instead of subtracting 2 from both sides, uh, I want to subtract 1 from both sides. OK. So now it's uh, subtract 1 less or equal 0. OK. So now one of the sides is 0. And we want to uh, now simplify the left-hand side as much as possible. So viewing this as a fraction, this, this one's denominator is x plus 8. What is that one's denominator? 1. So then I want, it, I want uh, that 1 to be over x plus 8, so it'll be 2x minus 3 over x 
plus 8, and then minus 1, and then, you know, to be able to do what I want, I want this to be over x plus 8. But what's the cost of putting that x plus 8 down there? Yeah, another one up here. So now, now we're good to go. Okay, so now this is a... Uh, uh, I'll drop the parentheses there and write 2x minus 3 uh, over x plus 8 and then subtract x plus 8 over x plus 8 less or equal 0. Okay, so now it's uh, the difference of two fractions and they have the same denominator. Uh, so we can write it like this. But uh, what went wrong? Right. So you can either view it as a, as a f failed to distribute or uh, d didn't properly parenthesize. So now, these, uh, these red parentheses that I'm placing, in fact, those parentheses don't change anything. Uh, the, the expression is the same as it was before. But uh, these ones, these green ones that I'm just now writing, uh, before those green ones were there, we were saying that we're going to add 8. But uh, actually, you're supposed to be subtracting 8. So can you see the, mm -hmm. the thing? Good. So then uh, 2x, 2x is minus 1x would be uh, just 1x. And then 3 minus 8 would be <coughs> 11. Uh, negative 3 minus 8, I mean to say. And then over uh, x plus 8, uh, less or equal 0. All right. So any questions about these algebraic steps? Now, this seems kind of like a tedious thing to do, but I want to point out the reason why it's being done in just this way, is that uh, concerning all of these operations, uh, how many times did we do something to both sides of the inequality? Just once. And we what we did is we subtracted one from both sides. Is that safe? It is. And then notice that... Uh, all the rest of the algebraic work occurred only on one side. We weren't doing things to both sides. So it's impossible that we could have made some kind of uh, error concerning the direction of the inequality. It's just not possible. Okay. So now what we're going to do <coughs> uh, is we're going to solve an equation. So specifically, we're going to take, that, uh, take the inequality from 2 and then make it an equation. So the, the corresponding equation is x minus 11 divided by uh, x plus 8, and it uh, is the left-hand side. The right-hand side is 0, and instead of writing inequality, I'm going to write uh, equality. Okay, and we want to solve this. So what do we need to do to solve it? Okay, good. So if we multiply both sides by x plus 8, then uh, the new left-hand side would read like this. x plus 8 multiply x minus 11 over x plus 8. The new right-hand side would read 0 multiply x plus 8. And now I want to, you know, point something out. The whole purpose... <laughs> The whole purpose of doing all this algebraic work over here on the left side was so that we didn't have to multiply both sides by x plus 8, because we, we reckoned that to be risky. And then now suddenly I'm saying, nah, I'm going to do it. <laughs> what, what's the difference? Yeah, this is an equation now. That's an equation. So, so we don't have to worry that uh, we're multiplying by a negative number, because uh, equations don't have a direction. So we couldn't possibly be reversing it. But uh, nevertheless, equations do have some restrictions. What are you not allowed to multiply both sides by? Zero. Zero. But wait a second. So like, okay, like this, uh, we're multiplying by x plus 8. If x is 10, then that's 18. And we'd be multiplying both sides by 18, so that'd be fine. And if x is negative 100, then that's negative 92. And we'd be multiplying both sides by negative 92, and that would be fine. But wait, what if x is negative 8? 
Ah, right. Exactly. That's, the, that's why you have to do this step first. Because what this step is saying is that we're considering all conceivable x's, except negative 8. That one is not under consideration. So this step 1 is what gives you permission to do this. Without, without step 1, uh, it's not permitted that you should, that you should do this. All right. So those x plus 8's really do cancel. And we get the equation x minus 11 is 0, so x is 11. All right. Uh, four. This uh, method is named after this step. So now we make a sign chart. And uh, so we'll plot the, uh, the whole thing there. Uh, the, the, the number line. And what we want to do is plot uh, the cuts and breaks in the natural domain and also the solutions to the equation. So we're going to plot uh, negative 8 and 11. So here's negative uh, 8. And here's uh, 11. Now, they come from two different sources. right? This one is a break in the natural domain, and that's a solution to an equation. Uh, so to, to remind myself that uh, they come from different sources, I'm going to put an asterisk uh, by that one and say, you know, that one is different than that other kind. Okay, so then now in each one of these regions, we need to select a point. So something to the left of negative 8 is, how about negative 9? Something in here is 10, and something in here is 12. Okay, so then now we've got those, uh, those points there. And uh, what, uh, what are we supposed to do with those points? To what? To this. So you want to plug them into the non-zero side of that step. So this one, this one right there. So now uh, plug in to this one. All right, and uh, all that we're actually actually interested in is the sign, negative or positive. So if you plug negative 9 into the numerator there, that's negative 20, which is negative. And if you plug negative 9 into the denominator, that's something negative, right? So that'd be negative over negative. What if you plug in 10 to the, uh, to the numerator? something negative. And if you plug 10 into the denominator, something uh, positive. And if you plug 12 into the numerator, positive. And the denominator, positive. All right. So now, that's the, these things are called the sign patterns. And then now you want the overall sign. So if you have an expression that's, that's a, a negative divided by another negative, what's the overall sign? positive, and then the next region is going to be negative, and this one positive. But uh, don't, don't, uh, don't uh, think that that means that the signs have to always alternate, right? So this is positive, then negative, then positive. But y you can give me any, any sequence of the words negative and positive, and I can make a problem that has a sign chart like that. Like you could say, well, I want it to be four positives all in a row, and then, and then alternate positive and negative 80 times, and then whatever you want. I could make one that does that. Uh, okay, so this is called a sign chart uh, because it's a chart full of signs. And uh, <laughs> that's just the way stuff ends up getting named in math classes. All right, but uh, now we're able to make a conclusion. So what we did is that we took uh, the number line there and we said, uh, all right, We've now cut it into pieces and labeled each piece with either the, the label positive or the label negative. And we want all of one of those kinds. So do we want uh, all of the negative regions or all of the positive regions? Which kind do we want? The negative regions, because we're negative people? 
Right. So what we're doing is we're analyzing that inequality right there. And we want to know, when is this thing less or equal to zero? So, so which ones do we want? Negative regions. So we want the negative regions. Uh, in the end, again, the reason, the reason for that is uh, because of that. But you can imagine that uh, I could go back in time and edit the exercise, and instead of saying less or equal, if I turn that around and said greater or equal, then all of these inequality symbols would turn around, and then we'd want the positive regions. So whichever one you want uh, de depends on the exercise. So are there any negative regions? Yes, so the region between negative 8 and, uh, and 11. But uh, there's a question about, uh, do we want the boundaries? So for example, do we want 11? We do? Why do we want 11? Right, because in the end, the question is, is that if you plug x equal to le uh, 11 into this inequality, is the inequality false or true or what? It's true, because the inequality reads 0 less or equal 0, which is true. So we want, we want 11. Do we want negative 8? But it says less or equal. Yeah, but negative 8 is not even, uh, the inequality is not even defined there. So it's certainly not true there. All right, so then uh, the answer is negative 8, not including negative 8, to 11. Uh, including 11. Any question about this one? Yes? These ones? Uh, well, uh, the, the number line is cut into pieces, and you just want to choose a number that's in each piece. So like, uh, that's negative 8, so something to the left of that is negative 9. Negative 8 and 11, something in there is 10. And uh, something to the right of 11, 12. So you can pick any number between negative 8 and 11? For this region, yeah. I just chose uh, 10. I could have chosen, say, ne uh, negative 7. But then I'd have a negative number, you know. <laughs> That'd be more, more effort for my brain. <laughs> Which is already over, overworked. Okay, so then uh, here's one more. Uh, find find the natural domain of say uh, the square root of w cubed minus four w squared minus twenty one w. Okay, so find the natural domain of, of that. All right. So you might, uh, you might sort of, you know, right, rightfully um, uh, say, you know, what does this have to do with what we were just doing? <laughs> well, uh, that square root, uh, the thing that I'm covering up there is called, you know, the name for that bit, the thing that's going in, in the thing, that's called the argument. So what must be true about the argument to the square root? It doesn't need to be positive. It needs to be non-negative, <laughs> right? Uh, which means that zero is permitted also. So what we need to do, you know, all that this is, what, what this question is, is this is a, a way for me to say, it, a way for me to say that you need to solve this inequality. W cubed minus four W squared uh, minus 21 W has to be greater than or equal to zero. That's what must be true. And uh, well, there's only, you know, this is an inequality. It's not, it's not one of the very simple kind, right? It's because it's got cubes and squares and things like that. So the only way to proceed is with a sign chart. Okay, so what this, what this statement is, is just sort of a cute way for me to 
see if you can remember, oh yeah, the thing being put inside the square root has to be greater or equal to zero, which means I have to solve that inequality, uh, which means I need to use the sign chart. Oh, so, so uh, in order to do this with the sign chart method, what's the first step of the sign chart method? Natural domain. Now, we've got to be kind of careful here because the, the request at the beginning is to find the natural domain of that expression, right? And uh, to do that, that means that we notice we have to solve an inequality, which means we're going to use the sign chart method, which means now that we're going to calculate the natural domain of what? The inequality. So because there's two things going on here, you got to make sure you understand what's pointing at what. The request is to find the natural domain of that expression, and currently we're finding the natural domain of that inequality. Well, what is the natural domain of that inequality? The question is, is for, what, for what w, for which w, is this defined? All of them, right? It's not, it's not a question of which of, for which w is this true. It's, it's for which w is this, is this defined. All of them, right? Because that's a polynomial in w, and that's a constant, so it has no, no restrictions whatsoever. So all w. OK. Now we're going to do the 0 and factor step. One of those is going to be pretty easy. Which one's going to be easy? <laughs> zero, right? Because <laughs> one of the sides is already zero. All right. So concerning those, uh, those three terms, do you observe that there's a common factor? Uh, of what? W. So then we can say W multiplied by W squared minus 4W uh, minus 21 greater or equal zero. And then, oh, now we've got a quadratic in there. Does that factor? <laughs> Amazing. How does it factor? So uh, w uh, plus 3, right? And then uh, w minus 7, greater or equal to zero. OK, so now we've, we've, we've done it. We've got, uh, we've got uh, it zeroed and, and factored. What's the next step? Solve an equation. So now it's uh, right down the left-hand side and the right-hand side, but right equal now. <clears throat> okay. So this is pretty straightforward because, you know, because we did all the work up here, it's now factored and we're saying equal to zero. So what must be true? Right, one of these factors has to be zero. Okay, so then uh, that means that there's three possibilities. What is that one saying is possible? W could be zero. Another possibility is that uh, W could be negative three. And the last possibility is that W could be seven. Okay, so the next step is the chart. This method is named after this uh, step. So we'll plot. Uh, how many fence posts are we going to plot? Three, right? Uh, remember that the fence posts come from step one and step three. So in this exercise, there were no fence posts which came from step one, which means that there were no breaks in the natural domain. And uh, also, there were, no, uh, there were three of these. But uh, you can give me any two uh, numbers that you wish, and you can say, I want you to make a problem that has 13 of these and 14 of those. OK, fine, I can do it. Okay. Uh, fine, so I plot them. So 1, 2, 3. So now I'm going to make an error. So 
What's my error? Yeah, but I mean, that's the, those are the solutions, right? Zero, yeah. negative. <laughs> right. So, so there's three, there's three numbers here, okay? Zero, negative three, and seven. And when you plot them, they have to be in order on the line, right? That's not, that's not the correct order. So what, what I'm letting you know, okay, is that in my experience grading, if students are going to write these in the wrong order, the order that they get written down in is whatever order is right here. I've, ne I've never seen the, the numbers written in the wrong order, and it wasn't the same as these. <laughs> so can you see the mistake? <clears throat> okay, so then uh, since, since you asked uh, uh, the question, I'll ask you. Uh, what, what, uh, what, what number should I select in this region? That won't work for this one. Negative four. Negative four. All right. How about this one? Which one in here? Negative one. Yeah. Negative one is in there. And this one? Four. All right. And this one? Eight. Okay. So you've just got to select a number that's in each in each one. So now we're going to take these numbers, and we're going to uh, plug them into the left-hand side of this inequality because th it's this inequality that is the answer to our question. So we're going to take these and plug them into this one. Always be sure to plug it into this one. Okay. Uh, okay. So then. There's three factors, one, two, three. So each of the sign patterns is going to have three, three bits. So at negative four, the pattern would be negative, and then negative, uh, and negative. So negative, negative, negative. At negative one, it would be negative, positive, negative. Is there any question how I'm coming up with those things? So I'm taking that number negative one, and I'm putting, I'm putting it into these three factors. So a negative number, a positive number, a negative number. I just keep going now. So I'll plug in four. So positive, positive, negative. And then finally, positive, positive, positive. And now in each region, so that, those are the patterns. Now we want the overall sign. So what's the overall sign in the leftmost region? Negative. Negative. In the next region? Positive. In the next? Negative. And in the next? Positive. Good. So again, this is an exercise where they, they alternate, but they don't need to alternate. Uh, fine. Now we're able to make a conclusion. So again, we've made it to a place where we've constructed the sign chart, which is to say we cut, the, we cut the number line into pieces and labeled each piece either with the label negative or the label positive. Yes? When you say the overall sign, would that basically mean like when you put it into, uh, say, W plus 3 if you're plugging in negative 1 and you solve for W, or you just solve the equation if it equals positive? Is that where you're getting the overall? More, not exactly. What I'm doing is I'm taking this pattern. So do you, do you, uh, are you comfortable with how I got positive, positive, negative? Yes. Okay, so then if we had three numbers, one of them was positive, one positive, and the other negative, and we multiplied them all together, what would the overall sign be? Oh, I see. Be negative. Okay. And uh, like here, we have three negatives. So two of them cancel each other out, and then we've got one more. So it's, so it's negative. Okay, so then for, for this exercise, do we, want, uh, do we want all the negative regions or all the positive regions? Positive. In the positive regions, in the end, because the inequality is saying that product needs to be greater than or equal to zero, so we want the positive ones. Then, are there any positive ones? Yes. Yes, and uh, as, as a result, uh, so, so, you know, the, there's going to be a, a non-empty answer. Uh, and then we need to ask, do we want uh, any of the boundary points? So one of those answers is right. <laughs> yeah. 
Right. So then un under what circumstance might you exclude them? So, so if, if they weren't in the natural domain, but the natural domain is all W. So we're not going to exclude any on that account. But what's another way we could end up excluding them besides not being in the natural domain? How about if that didn't say greater or equal? What if it just said greater than? Okay. But at any rate, uh, we want uh, the boundary points. So this would be negative 3 to 0, union uh, 7 to infinity. Good. So when you say boundary points, that just means the bracket. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the the in, the endpoints of the of the interval. Yeah. So that's the you know the answer. Pretty nice. And again, what's being graded is this process. Notably, n not you just writing that down. It's it's this organized, okay, flow of thought beginning to end. That's what's being graded. Okay. Um, good. <coughs> So one, one thing I want to mention is that, uh, you know, this is sort of, um, well, in my experience uh, teaching, uh, anytime a student uh, comes to understand a question, like they understand, like they say, ah, I understand this topic, it's always either the case that they understand it sort of like in a, like, uh, like this kind of way, where there's just a bunch of computation and then you just do it, uh, or they understand it from like a visual way, like, the, from the point of view of a picture. And uh, what I want you to observe is that like uh, this, this way of thinking is sort of devoid of pictures. <laughs> uh, fine. But uh, now I want to show you the picture point of view of this. So we're now going to start, uh, as far as topics are concerned, we're going to start transitioning to, uh, to uh, uh, being able to plot things, like looking at things uh, in the picture point of view. And if we were to plot, if we were to plot y is w cubed minus 4w squared minus 21w, if we were to plot that, then it would look like this. So this would be the w axis, this would be the y axis. And uh, because, because that uh, degree three polynomial factors in that way, and because those are the solutions, that one, that one, and that one, that means that when we plot it, in fact, we're going to have three intercepts, one there at w is zero, another one here at uh, w is negative three, and another one here at uh, w is seven. So we're going to have those three intercepts. So those are going to be part of the plot. And uh, if we were to plot a bunch more points, then the result would end up looking like this. So I'm not saying that this is something you should be able to know exactly now. I'm saying that this is what we're going to move on to, thinking, thinking about things like this. And, uh, you know, so this is, this is the point uh, negative 3 here. That's 0. And this one is uh, 7. And uh, here's what I want you to observe. Concerning the red, do you, do you observe that some of it is above the w axis and some below? And uh, notably, the intercepts, those intercepts, cut the, uh, the plot into, uh, into uh, four pieces. You know, that, that one being also dashed. Cut it into four pieces, and in each piece, the plot is either all uh, below or all above. Uh, all above. So like, uh, for example, this point right here that's on the graph. Uh, its y value is, uh, is negative or positive, the y value? Negative, negative because it's below. And uh, how about here? The, the y value is, is negative or positive? Positive, because it's above. So what I want you to see is all these y values are negative, all these y values are positive, all these negative, all those positive. Okay, and uh, the picture, what, what, what's being asked, essentially, is that uh, we can only use 
we can only use the part of the graph where the y values are positive. So in sort of a, an abuse of, <laughs> of, of the math here, I'll, I'll put this all in one big square root, you know, like that, and say that, uh, well, we can only do it. We can only do it if, uh, if the y values are positive. Do you see that, uh, that the y values are positive exactly there and there, and that's also exactly the answer to this question? Yes? So you're saying the line is the uh, equation under the radical, and the radical is making us look for the parts above the uh, double axis? Well, I mean, this was, the, this was the motivating question. The question is, is where, where would this expression be defined? Then we said, well, it would be only where this is greater than or equal to zero, which means in the picture, it would be only where the red happens to be above the W axis. So in that bit and uh, that bit. Yes? So is that the same thing as a sine graph or an intuitive? I am not sure what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, so maybe. Uh, but I'd, I'd be happy to talk to you after class. Because the reason why I'm just hesitant to say yes or no immediately is because there's a function called sine, as in S-I-N-E, and there's another function called sine, as in S-I-G-N, and I'm not sure if you mean those or something else. <laughs> okay, so now, I said the word function, I didn't mean to say that. Now I mean to say the word function. <laughs> All right. Uh, no. Uh, we're now in chapter 3.1, or section 3.1, which is to say chapter 3. Functions. So in the first place, we're going to define something called a relation. So a relation is a mapping. from a set called the domain to a set called the range. All right, so what does that mean? Well, uh, an example would be like this. So I'll say that this is the domain set The domain set uh, contains A, B, C, and D. And then I'll say that this is the range set. And uh, maybe it contains 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we've got, you know, the domain contains those letters. The range contains uh, those numbers. And uh, the mapping means that uh, we're going to draw arrows from elements in the domain to elements in the range. So, and when you draw an arrow, the way that you say it is, uh, is for example, I'll draw an arrow from A to 3. And uh, the way that you say that is that A is related to 3. Okay, so I'll say that A is related to 3 and A is related to 1. Uh, and I'll say B is related to 4 and uh, B is related to 1. For those of you keeping track, that's a 13-14 that's a joke. C, I'll say, is related to 5, and maybe only 5. And uh, maybe D is related to 5 and uh, 2. All right. So such a thing is called a relation. Uh, so you can say, what is D related to? Two and five. And, five. and then, you could, then you could ask a different question. You could say, you could say uh, something like, what is related to one? A and B, right? Which means, you know, which, air, which things are pointing at one? A and B. So now, uh, relations are very important, but we're not really going to study them in this class. Rather, we're going to study a specific kind of a relation called a function. But I want to impress upon you the importance of relations. Uh, so for example, uh, you might have heard of uh, Google, Facebook, Twitter. 
Uh, so what, what they're doing is uh, they, they're maintaining an enormous relation with, mi with millions and millions of things in the, do in the domain and range. And uh, they're, they're keeping track of that and computing statistics on it and things like that. So an example would be, uh, would be you know, Twitter, for example. Okay, so then you could, you could imagine a famous person like, uh, like uh, Taylor Swift, say. Okay. And uh, you can imagine, it's not the case because I don't really use Twitter, but imagine I do use Twitter and that I was following Taylor Swift. Mm -hmm. Then you could say that in that sense, because I'm following, you could say in the relational sense, I'm related to Taylor Swift. <laughs> Only in the sense that uh, following, right? But, uh, you know, Taylor Swift isn't following me. <laughs> right, right, okay. Fine. Uh, so that's a relation. And Google does the same thing, but they do it with web pages, and Facebook does the same thing because you've got friends and and things like that and what, and what, ha what have you. Uh, what they do is they, they maintain that relation and calculate statistics and things like that and then they use that to sell you targeted ad advertising. It's big business. Uh, fine. So a function is a specific kind of relation. So a function is a relation <coughs> so in the first place, which means that uh, a function is a mapping from a set called a domain to a set called a range. That's so in the first place, a function is, is a relation, but we have a restriction. Uh, a function is, is a relation such that the mapping uh, maps each element in the domain to one element in the range. Uh, so for example, If the domain is A, B, C, D, and the range is uh, 1, 2, 3, uh, then, you know, you could say that uh, this is the, the mapping. So now, this restriction, what it means in terms of this picture, it means that uh, to be a function, you can have at most one arrow leaving the things in the domain. So only one arrow is allowed to leave. It's fine for, for more than one arrow to arrive. That's fine. But, uh, but uh, you can only have, uh, you must have exactly one arrow leaving. So this is a function. Uh, is this one a function? No. no, because for example, two things are leaving A. Well, it's the mapping altogether. You can't just point at individual. Yeah. So in, in a sense, this would be like, you know, if you consider this to be a vending machine, if you push the, the buttons on the machine, only one item comes out. Whereas on this machine, if you push button A, two things come out. So that's not a function. That's a relation. This is a function. Finally, we are finally in a place where I can explain something that's been uh, hovering uh, in the class the whole time. So like on the second day, or maybe not the second day, but very early, uh, I asked a question like this. I said, what is the square root of 16? And, and what's the answer? Four. The answer is four. And now some of y'all said plus or minus four. And I said, no. And then, uh, <laughs> you know, the <laughs> and then y'all said, no, wait a second. And I said uh, something like, well, I agree that negative 4 squares to 16. I'm not disputing that. Nevertheless, the square root of 16 is uh, 4. It's not negative 4, and it's definitely not positive or negative 4. Definitely not. Why? That's right, because the square root is a function. So this is 4, and it's definitely not plus or minus 4. That would mean that uh, when you plug something into the square root, two things come out. That's not permitted. It's not permitted because the square root is a function. 
So what I'm what I'm saying is that uh, the square root, uh, if you look at you know 16 right here, there's only one arrow permitted to leave 16. Only one arrow is permitted, and uh, it points at four for the square root function. You can't have two arrows leaving 16. You can't have one pointing at four and another, and another at negative four. Can you see it? Okay. Uh, good. We still have time. So let's keep going. <clears throat> so the most common kind of function in our experience, uh, in, in our class, is going to be functions defined by an expression. Defined by expressions. All right, so uh, uh, probably, probably easiest to do an example of its use. We can say, okay, f of x is, uh, how about uh, 13x plus 14? So what that means is that uh, we have a function whose name is f. Its name is f, and uh, what you do is that uh, when you wanna when you wanna plug an x in, that's the formula you're supposed to use. So I could ask, for example, what is uh, what is f evaluated at two? What does that mean? Right. So you take that uh, that formula and you replace all the x's with twos, and then it's just uh, arithmetic from there. So that'd be what uh, 26, uh, 40. Or, you know, f of negative uh, 1, so that would mean 13 multiplied by negative 1 uh, plus 14, so that'd be 1. Okay, and then the, the, the amusing thing comes when you start saying, well, instead of plugging in numbers, what if we, what if we uh, do this? What if we plug in, say, uh, 5w? Now what's being asked? Yeah, let's replace all of the uh, let's replace all of the x's with five w's. Okay, so that would be thirteen multiplied by five w, and then plus fourteen. You know, and then the you know you want to want to simplify that, so that'd be sixty five w plus fourteen. All right, any question about that? So now, uh, one thing that hasn't been mentioned yet that I'll just uh, leave, leave open in the air is, uh, is the following, is that functions have domains and ranges. Functions have domains and ranges, and uh, we didn't talk about that at all here. So we didn't mention uh, domain and range. Okay, but uh, now here's the, here's the thing I want to leave you with to think about. Here's two functions. The first function is uh, this one. Uh, how about x uh, cubed over x, and uh, here's another function. g of x is, uh, well, if we were to simplify that, we'd get x squared, right? Okay, so the question I want you to want to leave you with that we'll pick up first thing next time is, uh, are these the same function? Okay, the answer is going to be no, and we need to figure out why. So have a nice uh, Wednesday. <laughs>